breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to The Glitter Boys. Welcome back, dear listener. This time on a very special episode of The Glitter Boys. We're going into (laughs) something I've been looking forward to talking about since we started this damn thing. Continuing our introduction to dot 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 series, we're going into Nightbane, Palladium's weird gothic body horror conspiracy adventure game. Nightbane was very interesting to me when I was first reading it. I got this sense. I'm the only one who's read Elric. I, I realize that am- amongst my friends, but there, there exists another world that is the chaos world, uh, which is very much like n- not not in the specifics, but like the feel I got from Nightvane and and them invading that that world. And you know, Palladium has done that kind of thing several times, where there's the alternate world that's invading. Main one that comes to mind for me would be Wormwood, the Rifts, Mm -hmm. uh, the very first Dimension book. Wormwood does that. It's pretty freaking cool. I I I love the the concept of you know the the other world invasion. And what I love about Nightbane is that it's like a parallel world. It's like evil Earth. (laughs) You know, and in the Megaverse, and all of this has gone over. All of these are still compatible, though this. Uh, it should be noted is primarily an SDC world. It, w- yeah, 100% SDC. There is no MDC in this. I only saw it mentioned once yeah. in, in the whole read through. And I think it's basically like, if this is in an MDC setting, then use this instead kind of con- reference. Yeah. yeah. Nightbane, or shall we call it Night Spawn? Yes. <laughs> is, well, With okay. Rum. Let's talk about, let's just talk about what you get when you pick up this book. First off, it's a thick game. This is an actual complete RPG, unlike Chaos Earth. This has everything that you need to run the base game. It's you, you first pick this up and you have this goddamn beautiful piece of Brahm art. Like, I didn't know anything about it when I first saw it on the shelf when I was like 16. I was like, I, I, this, I need this in my life. Fuck World of Darkness. I'm going Nightmane. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. <laughs> this is, you've got this. You know, this woman with really nice rack and really cool outfit and those wicked hands and something the hell going on with her head. It's kind of like this ant looking bug helmet with spikes. And then you've got what's up with this guy with like the the weird extendo neck and the little 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 pigtails at the top. And (laughs) I think he's smiling, but he's probably going to eat you. And then little dog dude at the bottom. This this is an adventuring party for Nightbane. This you look at this and you're like, okay, what's this all about? And then you start reading and you're like, oh, those are the player characters. Because this game, you play characters, humans, that transform in these into these otherworldly monster-like things. But you're good. <laughs> I mean, it, everything's available from a point of view. However, you're not treated as good. Uh, society does not see you as good despite your deeds. Yeah. But there's a reason for that, which I'm sure NPC will get into later. (laughs) Yeah. So the basic concept of Nightbane is that it's a modern conspiracy, body horror, misery, dystopia setting. All of that, if those words mean anything to you and they excite you, then that's the kind, this is the kind of game for you. It's as Matthew, as you mentioned, there's an invasion coming from another world, a parallel reality called the Nightlands, which some people call the mirror world because, surprise, you travel there through mirrors. The world is being slowly taken over following an event that was called Dark Day, in which, randomly, in the middle of the day, everything went dark, 24 straight hours of darkness, while the Nightlands temporarily overlapped. Some say that's when the invasion started. Others say it's been going on for much, much longer. Anyway, Dark Day, Recent Memory, an apocalyptic event. If you've played Palladium games, you're familiar with the concept of there being a sudden (laughs) apocalyptic event. 
This one isn't overwhelming, though. I like this one. Subtle, yeah. The the moon goes out, the stars go out. It's just you look up and there's black. The power goes out. And all of a sudden, we're not the six-foot muscular supermen that we think we are in our inner id. We're all of a sudden a bunch of scared little primates crouching in apartments. And I really like that because it didn't, the oceans didn't flood, lightning didn't strike, things weren't torn asunder. It just, nobody had their nightlight. And I really, really like that. This game, cover art by Brom, writing credit goes to CJ Carella. You know this is going to be awesome. CJ Carella, to me, is the rock star of Palladium game design. He's done a number of games from Palladium. He's done games for multiple gaming companies, including his own stuff. One thing that we should talk about is that it wasn't just something else coming to the planet, the the Day of Darkness. It was also the changing people on this planet. It should be noted, however, that the people on this planet who changed were of a very specific age category. I believe it was, what, 13 to 17, 13 to 18, something like that? It was, I, it was teenagers. It was teenagers, young adults mostly, if I remember yeah. correctly. I know that there have been differences depending upon who's running it and the interpretation of the setting. But yeah, like kind of like in superhero stories, you know, one day the, the teenager or something just sort of randomly erupts with weird superhuman power and causes a disturbance in the world around them. This happened during Dark Day for a lot of these humans who realized that they weren't actually human. They were something called Nightbane, in which their true form erupted for the first time. Because their human skin, forever forward, is referred to as their facade. It's what they look like to normal people. The true form, the Nightbane form, or the Morphous erupts on dark day for the first time showing the world around them what true monsters quote unquote they are but really they're just monstrous looking heroes supposedly well the book tries to indicate that you're playing these monstrous heroes who fight against the night lords a lot of people didn't survive this (laughs) oh no oh no while it was a, a quieter apocalypse than what is normal for palladium it was (laughs) <laughs> also a pretty bloody one. Yeah. Like it goes into graphic detail about how some people lost it and turned upon their own families. And that was actually a fairly common event. Suicide was a very common event during the during the Day of Darkness. Not all the people who gained Amorphous were comfortable with the concept. It wasn't, yay, cool, superhuman powers. I'm a wolf man. It was, oh my God, I'm a monster leap off building. Um, so yeah, you're, you're tough. You're hard to kill. You regenerate, but that can be overcome. This game is a complete role-playing game. This game has heroes. It has villains. It has world information. A lot of it. It's got quite a bit. Yeah. It has adventure hooks. It has background plots. It has multiple deeply detailed warring factions Deep conspiracies, extensive gear lists, full rules for pretty much anything that you would want to do in this game. It, God, it's wonderful. It is a wonderful work of gaming creation. (laughs) And I will fight you. (laughs) You're not going to have to fight me. (laughs) It's something that should also be noted is the level of control that humans have over their planet. Before the Day of Darkness, we, we had all the control. After the Day of Darkness, not so much. It wasn't an invasion by an army, but it was totally an invasion by an army of spies or saboteurs or or things of that nature. People got replaced. Body snatchers. Yeah. And a new political party formed in America, which, interestingly enough, preaches, preaches an, an America first concept, hmm. a, a return to the value but is pretty much body snatchers. Yeah, they so compare that to modern day with things <laughs> like, you know, MAGA and Q. 
And I'm like, yeah. hmm, looks like we're fucking checking some page from the future here, Palladium. <laughs> looks like you were uh, just a little too early on what you were thinking the year was going to be when this happened. Because I think I as just, a game, it's 1998. It is like <laughs> May 6th, uh, yeah. 2000 oh, okay. was the day of darkness. And May 7th was the day the lights came back on in America, not in on America. the far side. Yeah. And, you know, to bring it to modern, I, I still say Trump does not fit in his skin suit well. It's 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 kind of men in black. It's just it's it's poorly fitting. <laughs> There's a creature in Nightbane called the Namtar or the Hollow Men. I've actually brought them into my Rifts game a few sessions back. I don't think those the gunslinger snake things. Oh, no, no, no. They were the the big the men in black with the bugs in their heads. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was my nice little nod to Nightbane and what might be coming up in that game. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, the Night Lords are like these, you know, these conquerors from another dimension that are trying to take over Earth and, you know, become powerful. Well, think think Elder God for this one. Mm, yeah. Like they're the spiky Elder Gods, less tentacly, more spiky. Yeah, more like Cenobite kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Like if you could turn a Cenobite into a, like a conqueror, like give a Cenobite an army and there you have the Night Lords. And this game is very inspired by Hellraiser and the works of Clive Barker. From our previous podcast, Have Movies Will Game, we reviewed a movie <laughs> called Nightbreed. And oh, I yeah, suggested yeah. Nightbane as the game for that, for playing out the themes of that movie. Did we never do Hellraiser on Have Movies Will Game? We never did Hellraiser. Yeah. Fuck. I don't think it was even suggested. Anyway, sorry. There's so much Clive Barker inspiration in this. Yeah. I I like it. I like it because there is nowhere for in in our traditional sense of what what the the structure of our society is, there is nowhere for you to really stand. The government is taken, the police are taken, the FBI is taken, the military is taken. You're just people. Or an or nightbane, and the people do not trust the nightbane. It is it is one of the overriding goals of the the, the goodly aligned nightbane to regain that trust. But you know, people are people. It wasn't so long ago we you know pick up pitchforks and torches. Different. Yeah. In fact, uh, don't don't look at the news. We're still doing that. <laughs> oh. I'm just saying that that's yeah. part of that's part of our human nature is is not to trust the other is not to trust difference. And Nightbane tackles that really difficult concept and makes it playable, which is a, a rather bold step for an entertainment, like, uh, you know, like, like a role-playing game. You, you usually don't deal with the underlying causes of humanity <laughs> by no. rolling dice at it. But I, I think it, it, it plays with that concept very well. And taking that concept further, the factions in the game, they are well detailed and com complete with lists of what these factions think about the other factions. Yeah. And the best part about that is there are no good factions. There are factions that you look at some of their goals and you're like, man, I can totally get behind that. And then you're like, yeah, but they do this thing and I hate that yeah. thing. None of them are 100% sympathetic, including like the alien space paladins, whatever they're called, the, the light bringers. Yeah. They're not, that good they're really lawful and they they bring goodness in some ways but they don't it's not a universal the reader's going to look at yeah. this and think these are the good guys kind of thing aliens are alien mm -hmm. <laughs> uh it should be noted that uh i'm saying it should be noted a lot i, sh I should stop that <laughs> mine is oh, mine shit. is here's how it works <laughs> i yeah. say that a lot yeah. <laughs> as as you're casting around for some some piece of normality keep in mind that there is a vast propaganda machine put on by the new conquerors of the planet that is saying that everything's fine mass hallucinations drugs in the water that kind of thing P people in masks rubber suits that this this isn't <laughs> happening but it, it goes into loving detail about this parallel world of where where all these creatures come from and you know cities exist there but they're they're an analog but twisted it, it is it is the dark dimension it is the goatee spock world it is 
it's the bad place, but it exists in conjunction of our own. So when you look at that through the multiverse perspective, I, I can't think of a single game that has one world with the possible exception of recon. I'm not following you. That has one world in, in, in palladium. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, most everything involves like other realities and other worlds. Maybe ninjas and super spies. Mm. Yeah. I that's that's one that I never really delved into, so I can't really speak to it. I know like the Ninja Turtles, for example, and after the bomb and whatever, they cross into multi dimensions. <laughs> like there's yeah. even like the, the mega dimensional TMNT kind of thing. So mm-hmm. trans dimensional. Yeah. I mean it's just it, it's they've been playing with the multiverse for a long time. Megaverse. God, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one of mine. And uh, I, I think I think they got really close to some fantastic old fantasy tropes in this one. Once again, Michael Moorcock, the Elric saga. If if you like this, you will you will like Nightbane. And and vice versa. If you're a fan of Nightbane, you will love the Chaos Lords and their realm. It's just it it it, it spoke to something that I loved as a child and, and really brought it to a new level of, of, of scaredness and terror. It's, it's good stuff. Speaking of scaredness and terror, this is a horror game from the 90s that holds up today. In fact, it's even better, in my opinion, if you adapt it to the modern day. What I mean by this is many horror games from that era, from the early 2000s and before, fail in modern technology, they are ruined by the existence of a cell phone. They are yeah. ruined by the existence of a vast, easily accessible, immediate internet of worldly information. Nightbane is made worse by it. It's harder now because, it's again, it's conspiracies and takeovers. And if you've got someone controlling that information like they do in the Nightbane world, making it easier for them to do so is harder for you to succeed in your tasks. So in my opinion, it holds up so well that even though they didn't predict the whole, you know, the the wireless everything everywhere all the time, that makes it even scarier. So you're saying Mark Zuckerberg is a night bane. Night bane? I know I'd say he would be a night lord (laughs) or 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 a pawn of the night lords. A lord of the outer (laughs) night. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think Google would definitely be a a, a shell company owned by the night lords entirely. (laughs) You're just still mad they canceled Hangouts. Well, oh, no, plus really. (laughs) But no, Google is evil as fuck. They, they, evil company. Sorry. I know their whole thing is do no evil. They are fucking evil. (laughs) <laughs> they are so evil that I, I fear them. And if they were owned by Night Lords, that would explain a lot. <laughs> okay. I, I've, I've spoken of this before, but never on the, on the cast, so I'm going to go for it. I went out to buy Buckley's house when we were out uh, for a wagon con. Buckley and being one of our players and uh, host of wagon con. I saw the, the Google plant out there. That is an unholy temple filled with smoke and fire that rises into the night sky. I can totally see that being the home of a dark god. So if you're looking to modernize this and bring this into the modern age, there is a dark lord that lives uh, far outside of Portland. (laughs) Yeah, the the telecommunications center or whatever, the the Google bunker out in the Dalles. Oh my god. It's massive. And it's designed to resist tanks. (laughs) I, I'm serious. They have escarpments and butts and switchbacks. Do no and, evil, though. You know. yeah, do no evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> getting back to Nightbane, like, okay, player characters. We've talked a lot about the existence of the one called the Nightbane, which, you know, the game is named after them. They're basically people who transformed into these randomized fucked up monsters. But there's other player character options as well. You can play, yeah. like, humans who are in the know. You can play sorcerers. You can play good vampires. The vampire. The, the vampire. Yeah. You, you can play what are called guardians, which are like these, these tiny little elf-like aliens that shoot light bolts out of their fingers. Uh, you can also play... <laughs> this one is the most random fucking thing. I don't know why it's in this book. I don't understand its origin. I just don't get it. But it's an RCC on page 169 called The Snake Bird. It's also one of the most overused pieces of palladium art. They just took that snake and put wings on it. I was going to say that was the vampire <laughs> regrowing its flesh. 
one. I've seen that in like four books. Oh yeah, the vampire regrowing his flesh is pretty common, and the the uh, the two robots punching each other on the ground is pretty yeah. common. But this is the snake bird. It's essentially a sentient talking flying snake. That's <laughs> I don't know why it's in this game. It just doesn't <laughs> fit. But you have so many options for player characters in this book alone that you don't have to be Nightbane. And then the later yeah. books add even more. They go into the astral realm. There's an entire book on nothing but the dream world. I love it so much. There's also psychics and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to talk about the art real fast. Uh, it reminds me of that certain era of the White Wolf art that's very heavy inks, lots of like random shooty off bits. It's, it's a very dirty, grungy look. Like there's your, there's your standard clean uh, line art that like uh, Kevin Long does and Simbita. But there's there's also like this new White Wolf style art. You know why that is? Or, Huh. RK Post. He's the artist. Is, is that the artist? It's, it's really nice yeah. work. Yeah, like, like for example, that mm-hmm. picture on page 12. Oh, God, look at that. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. RK Post's work is just, it's so inspiring to me. Or the picture on page 18. Oh, man. Just, I want to talk about the weaponry real fast. Yeah. There are pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of modern weaponry. It's it's actually an incredible detail. I still say that people don't understand where large scopes go. They don't go on a MP5. That's that's a spray and pray weapon. But it's it's all there. It's all statted out and it's all kitted out. So most of our modern weapons are there. Keep in mind there are some glaring errors if you're a gun nerd. Just don't don't pay any mind to it. This is the same weapon and combat system that was popular in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and in Heroes Unlimited and Ninjas and Super mm-hmm. Spies. Literally wholesale copied across those books. If, yeah. So it, complete with the errors. If you're used to seeing specific guns that have maybe a misprint in them or a strange amount of damage, it's going to appear in all of those games. Palladium copies and pastes. Eh. Love it or hate it. You know, they they put out an enormous volume of work. Mm-hmm. This kind of stuff happens. There's like 12 pages of guns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's pretty much all I had on it. Yeah. It's it's certainly worth your time to pick up. Uh, talking about importing, it's fairly easy to do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a glitter boy, but it's eminently survivable in Rifts. There is the Dark Conversions book for Rifts, one of the conversion books which can help you convert all of your Nightbane characters and uh, and whatnot over. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah. I would like to make a note here that there is a series of modern video games that are increasingly popular called Persona. If you are familiar with those and you like them, Nightbane will be very, very close to your imagination because those games are very similar in theme and you can totally use Nightbane as the core system for something inspired by Persona. I'm, I'm nodding, but uh, I'm, I'm not Never, familiar with the yeah. games. <laughs> well, so we have talked about this at length here. Our next episode, we will talk about the actual Nightbane OCC itself, because that deserves its own full-length discussion. I'm looking at page 59 right now. I, I like... I like the the tie-in with the Egyptian gods, too. Um, okay, I'm going to leave this be. <laughs> We're going on to the OCC of Nightbane, and we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. 
All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time. 